combined gas law is the idea that if you know the pressure, volume, and temperature of a sample of gas, and that same sample of gas is later at a known uh, any two of pressure, volume, and temperature, you can solve for the other of the three variables. We're going to run through three examples of this. Let's start here. A sample of gas occupying 14 liters at 90 kilopascals and 20 degrees Celsius. We want to know the new pressure if it's at this new volume and this new temperature. Now, what I should point out is that the units you use for pressure don't matter as long as they match. You can use atmosphere, tor, uh, kilopascal, regular pascal. I'm sure there's other ways to measure pressure, PSI. As long as you're using the same units for both, you're going to be okay. As long as you're using the same units for volume on both sides, that's also okay. You can use milliliters, decimeters cubed, centimeters cubed, whatever. Temperature, on the other hand, has to be in Kelvin for this formula to work. That's because Kelvin is the form of temperature that measures the absolute amount of heat. So the very first thing we'll have to do to solve this problem is convert those temperatures to Kelvin. The way that we do that from Celsius to Kelvin is to add 273.15. So that means this is 293.15. The units there are just K for Kelvin. And if I add 273.15 here, I end up with 323.15 Kelvin. Now let's just take a quick lay of the land to see what we have here. We've got our initial volume, V1. We've got our initial pressure, P1. We've got our initial temperature, T1. We are being asked for the new pressure, that's P2, that we don't know. We are given the final volume, V2, and we are given the final temperature, T2. So we're going to plug these numbers into their corresponding places in the ideal or combined gas law formula. That's P1, 90 kilopascals, times V1, 14 liters, divided by T1, which is 293.15 Kelvin. I guess if I'm not going to write units... I'm not going to write units. P2 is what we don't know, times V2, which is now 20, and T divided by T2, which is 323.15. How do you solve for P2? Well, step one, you're going to have to isolate it. You have to undo this division by 323.15. I'm going to cross it out here, and I'm going to multiply it on the other side. 323. 0.15. That's now multiplied into the numerator of the other side. And I need to undo this multiplication with division. I can put that into the denominator. That's 20.0 multiplied by the 293.15 before you actually do any division. Now let's do the top of this and the bottom of this on our calculators. That's 90 times 14 times 323.15. The numerator of my fraction here is 407169. The denominator is 293.15 times 20. That's 5863. And I can actually do that division on the calculator. 407169 divided by 5863. Bang. 69.447. 69.447. It is a pressure, so I'm going to use the same pressure unit that I had before, that's KPA, and I need to round this to the proper number of significant figures. Three significant figures, three. This one's actually four, because I keep one decimal place, and that rounds me to about here. Three and four as well here. So I need to round this to three significant figures, one, two, three. My answer is 69.4 kilopascals. Cool. Solving for P2 isn't too bad. I think you'll find that solving for V2 is about the same. This question, though, asks me for temperature. Sample of gas occupies the same initial conditions. Well, that's good. That's still my V1. That's still my P1. And my T1 is still 293.15 Kelvin. Please remember to convert to Kelvin. I can't stress that enough. Now we want the new temperature. 
we want to know what T2 is, but we're given our final volume and our final pressure. We're going to plug these numbers into the equation. P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. Let's go. P1 V1 over T1 equals P2. I actually have a P2 this time. And I have a V2, but I don't have a T2. And this is where I find some kids get stumped because you're solving for what's in the denominator of one of the fractions. I'm going to show you how to solve that right now. There's two main options I can show you. The first is cross multiplying, where you take the top of one fraction times the bottom of the other equals the top of the other times the bottom of the first fraction. When you do that, you'll end up with top of this fraction times T2. That's top of this times bottom of that. Set it equal to the top of this fraction times the bottom of the other here. And now you've got no fractions at all. Kind of like when you have like 2x equals something. And then the secret to undoing these multiplications is to divide them out on the other side. 90.0 and 14.0. Then you can do all that math on your calculator. I'm going to do it with you. Don't worry. Your other option is to undo division by T2 by multiplying it on the other side. And then you undo this division with multiplication and do those multiplications with division. You'll end up with the same expression here. Now, you can do the whole top and then the whole bottom and divide. I'm going to show you how you can do all of this all at once. You just have to make sure that your denominator is written in brackets on your calculator. I've got my 80 times my 30 times 293.15 divided by, and I need to put the denominator in brackets before I do that multiplication. That ensures that I'm dividing by the product and not dividing by 90 and then accidentally timesing the result by an extra 14. 90 times 14, then I'm going to end those brackets. So again, you're dividing by both of those by putting them in brackets. I'm jumping straight to my final answer here. It's 558.38. My T2 is 558.38. Now that's in Kelvin because my initial temperature was in Kelvin as well. If I'm looking to convert that to Celsius, now I have to subtract 273.15. That's just how the conversion happens. Minus 273.15. I got 285.2. Wow. 285.23. Three degrees Celsius. That is hot, hot, hot. But I suppose the volume did double and the pressure barely changed. So I was expecting the absolute temperature to nearly double as well. Anyways, that's way too many significant figures if you ask me. I got three, 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 three. Well, that's actually four, but we talked about why. And that's three. I need this down to three significant figures, which means it's actually just about 285 degrees Celsius. Nice. The real trick here is that because you're solving for what's on the bottom of a fraction, cross-multiplying is most high school students' favorite way to solve for it. And as promised, how can you find V2? Well, again, I gave you the same initial conditions. So you got your V1, you got your P1, and your T1 is the same as it always was, 295.13. You're always converting to Kelvin. Please don't forget now you're given your final pressure, you're given your final temperature, almost. Don't forget to add 273.15. This one's 313.15 Kelvin. That's my T2, and I'm being asked for the new volume. Are you ready? We're plugging these numbers in to the formula. P1, initial pressure, 90.0. V1, Initial volume, 14.0. T1, initial temperature, 293.15.
equals P2. This time it's 100 V2 unknown T2 313.15. And we are again solving for something in the numerator of this fraction. One way to do that is to undo what's being done to it. How do you undo dividing? By 313.15, you multiply it on the other side. How do you undo multiplying by 100? You divide it out on the other side. Cool. We're going to do this on the calculator just like we always did. 90 times 14 times 313.15 divided by bracket. 293.15 times 100. Bam. My answer is 13.4596. I'm going to keep all of those for now. 13.4596. That's V2 volume, so it's in liters. And again, it's because those units had to match. And now I just got to round it to the proper number of significant figures. 3, 3, 4, 3, or 4, 4. So it's still 3 here. 1, 2, 3. This 4 is followed by 5 something, so it needs to get rounded up. That's 13.5 liters, approximately. Cool. The combined gas law is the fact that P, V, and T, or rather the ratio of pressure times volume divided by temperature, is the same for a particular sample of gas, no matter what permutation of pressure and volume and temperature you happen to be at. If you're given five pieces of information about a gas, you are likely being asked to use this combined gas law. The only real trick is you have to make sure your pressure units match, your volume units match, and your temperatures have to be in Kelvin. You cannot use any other unit for temperature. Hey, thanks for being with me, and best of luck.